Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Julius Robert Oppenheimer was born on April 22, 1904, to Jewish immigrant parents in New York. His father, Julius Seligman Oppenheimer, was a successful textile businessman, whereas his mother, Ella Friedman, was a painter. Young Robert used to live in a luxurious Manhattan apartment with his parents and brother. He enjoyed an affluent upbringing due to his father's wealth. Since his early childhood, J. Robert Oppenheimer showed signs of academic brilliance. At around seven years of age, he enrolled in the Ethical Culture Society School, where his father had been a board trustee for many years. Due to his excellent results and understanding of concepts, he was promoted from grade three to grade five within one year. Oppenheimer always had an interest in minerals, but his interest grew when he was in the final year of his school. He graduated when he was 17 years old, but unfortunately he had to delay his studies for one year due to health concerns. While he was on vacation to Czechoslovakia with his family, his love for minerals and chemistry compelled him to go prospecting in the place he was staying. There, he contracted colitis and had to miss one academic year. After recovering from colitis, he traveled to Germany and fell ill due to dysentery. This further delayed his plans for college enrollment at Harvard. Robert Oppenheimer visited New Mexico in 1922 with his father to regain strength and increase his outdoor experience. This was the period when he learned how to ride horses and developed a love for New Mexico. He also came across the Los Alamos Ranch School during an exploration trip there. This school holds a key importance in Oppenheimer's life because 20 years later, he suggested that the same institute should be used as a hidden lab for the Manhattan Project. Oppenheimer recovered from dysentery in 1922 and started his education at Harvard University around the fall of the same year. He studied chemistry initially, but changed his major to physics. He had an introverted personality at the time and used to write poetry during his free time. His dedication and focus allowed him to finish the degree within three years. After that, he went to Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge to continue his education. You may believe that the studious student would excel at this lab too, but that was not the case. Robert was not good at performing experiments. He also came close to losing his admission due to misbehavior. However, he did learn about quantum mechanics here and transferred to another university in 1926. During his time at the University of Göttingen, Robert suffered from depression. A book about lost time and a bicycle tour allowed his mood to lift, after which he thrived at the Institute. Oppenheimer also worked with Max Born, a physicist, to master his concepts of quantum mechanics. They published a combined quantum theory of molecules, which served as a breakthrough in physics. In May 1927, Oppenheimer received a doctorate in physics. By now, you've learned about Oppenheimer's early life and student life, but let's dig deeper into his adult life. University graduation opened many doors for Robert, but he chose to become a teacher at Caltech in California. It should not come as a shock that Oppenheimer's teaching subject was physics. In 1929, Robert started teaching at the University of California, where he became famous as a genius among his students. They admired him for his vast knowledge and teaching methods. He's also the reason why Berkeley became famous as the top place to study physics in the U.S. During his professorship years, Oppenheimer did research on various important topics of physics, such as nuclear physics, quantum electrodynamics, and much more. In the early 1930s, Oppenheimer became politically active when he met Jean Tatlock, who was a communist. He also agreed with Albert Einstein that Nazis could create a nuclear weapon. In 1939, Robert ended his relationship with Jean, which led him to lose his communist connections. Oppenheimer also became a part of the Manhattan Project during the same year. The project's main purpose was to use atomic energy for military benefits. Robert's first task was to choose a lab for the project, and his choice stuck out as odd to many people. 
The Manhattan Project began in 1942 at the Los Alamos School that Oppenheimer chose. Initially, only a few hundred people were part of the project. However, the number grew to 6,000 by 1945 and included many scientists who escaped European fascist rule. Oppenheimer's mission now became to develop a nuclear bomb before Hitler. His work led to the first nuclear explosion in July 1945 in a desert in New Mexico. The detonation had a code name called Trinity, which also inspired a poem later. The scientist was pleased by the positive results of his project and gave many related statements. However, his views changed after the Nagasaki bombing, which he considered unnecessary. He resigned from the project in the same year to show his stance against the further development of the atomic bomb. Despite that, Oppenheimer became famous as the atomic bomb's father after the Manhattan Project. Robert Oppenheimer, the renowned American physicist and one of the key figures in the development of the atomic bomb during World War II, was married to Catherine Kitty Puning Harrison. They got married in 1940. Oppenheimer and Kitty had a tumultuous relationship, with both moments of love and intense difficulties. Their marriage faced challenges, including Oppenheimer's demanding work on the Manhattan Project and his subsequent security clearance revocation due to suspicions of communist sympathies. These events put significant strain on their relationship, leading to separation in the 1950s and, finally, divorce in 1954. However, the two remarried later. They also had two children, Peter and Catherine Tony. Kitty became an alcoholic after her husband gained fame due to the Manhattan Project. She died of an embolism many years after Oppenheimer's death. The Manhattan Project was a secret until the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. It was after this event that Oppenheimer became a famous name in every household. He returned to Caltech after resigning from the project, but his teaching passion had died. So, Robert went on to become the chairman of the General Advisory Committee of AEC. The main role of this committee was to provide scientific advice to the Atomic Energy Commission. Scientists spent days arguing whether to expand the Manhattan Project or not. Oppenheimer opposed the development of the hydrogen bomb due to ethical and practical reasons. However, the committee agreed that they should expand studies on the nuclear weapons program. Robert's opposition also led him to suffer from various accusations. Some people alleged him to be a communist supporter. The AEC also held a hearing related to Oppenheimer's position as the chairman of the committee. The commission suspended him from nuclear research and took away his security clearance. This came as a blow to Oppenheimer's career ending his role within the government. The 1954 suspension halted Robert's career in the government. He also lost his power status among different scientists. But that didn't put an end to his reputation. In fact, President John F. Kennedy restored the scientist's reputation in 1963. Kennedy chose Robert as the recipient of the Enrico Fermi Award. This award is mainly given to scientists with lifetime achievements in the development or use of energy. However, Kennedy was assassinated before he could give out the award. So it was President Lyndon Johnson who gave the award to Robert Oppenheimer in December. After that, the famous scientist continued supporting the international control of atomic energy. The famous scientist led a tumultuous life due to his various achievements in opposition to the atomic bomb development later. He became a chain smoker around the end of his life. This habit caused him to develop throat cancer. Robert was diagnosed with cancer in 1965. He started treatment immediately, but it did not prove to be fruitful. His health continued to deteriorate, which eventually led to his death on 18th February 1967 in New Jersey. As for Oppenheimer's legacy in 2023, it is safe to assume that his contributions to science and his role in the development of the atomic bomb will still be remembered and acknowledged. He remains an important figure in the history of physics, and the impact of his work on the world's history 
continues to be studied and debated by scholars and historians. The fate of Oppenheimer and his contributions to the atomic bomb has also led to many biographies. A movie has been released about the life of Robert, with his name being the title.